I've titled this video as how not to play the King's Indian. And that's because if you look at this game, you will see that black who usually tries to attack on the in the King's Indian and white who tries to play on the queen side. Uh, nothing of that sort happens for black. Black goes completely wrong. And the, this game can prove to be a very ideal sort of a reminder for you that when playing the King's Indian, you have to be very, very alert, very decisive that you need to start uh, sort of promoting your aims on the king side. The players in this game are Narayanan SL, who is one of India's finest GMs. Uh, look at his rating 2663. Well, maybe he'll cross 2700 soon. And we have uh, Padmini Raut, who is one of India's finest women players. Uh, and she has won Olympiad medal and so many accolades to her name. They are playing at the Fagerness Open in the second round. I'll tell you more about the tournament very soon. But first, let's go and check this game. So Narayanan, starting with the white pieces, opens it up with knight to f3. Padmini responds knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3. And Padmini has been a Grunfeld player all her life. So she usually goes for d5 uh, and such positions. But she plays bishop g7. And this allows Narayanan to play e4 and stop Padmini's Grunfeld. Of course, Padmini knew that she is now have she would have to play the King's Indian. She plays d6, d4, castles, bishop e2, e5 was played on the board, castles and knight c6. We are in the main line of classical King's Indian. d5 pushing the knight away, knight goes to e7. And now a move that was championed by the world champion uh, Vladimir Kramnik b4 this is known as the bayonet attack and what white is saying is that i am starting my play on the queen side instantly here so now black has basically two ways to counter it one is that he ignores it he says that i don't care you want to do whatever you want to do you do i will play knight h5 and i will try to go for the f5 break maybe put my knight on f4 and so on this is one way to play the other way to play is that you see that, okay, I can slow down white's initiative on the queen side first and you play the move a5. Because white cannot really keep his structure with a3, the rook on a1 is undefended. So if you go a3, oops, sorry, a3 takes, takes and rook is hanging. So that's the reason why here uh, Padmini went for a5. Now white has two ways to play here. One is bishop a3. And the other one is what Narayanan played in the game to take the pawn. Rook takes a5 played. And now uh, this move, very nice move, a4 played. At this point now Padmini has to decide, you know, should she play the knight out from here like she has to in order to play f5. So she should play knight d7 or knight e8. Maybe knight h5 as well is possible. So there are all these possibilities. She decided to go knight d7. Very logical move. Because what you are doing is you want to put your knight on c5. Which is now an outpost. Uh, a very good way to... A good line that I want to show is knight e8. And this is a game by Magnus. He had played this once. It went bishop a3 here b6, bishop b4, rook a8 and now here a very typical idea for white because see if white doesn't get c5 he's not breaking through so he needs to get it he needs to create a weakness on the queen side and so a5 makes a lot of sense but here a5 is not a good move can you figure out why black to play it's not an easy point uh, easy moment but you have to think Yes, the move is c5. Very nice move. Uh, and now if you do off a saw, then knight takes c6, attacks the bishop as well as the pawn. Notice how the knight on e8 defends the pawn on d6. And so that's the reason why you can't instantly play a5 here. And it slows down a bit. And next move you want to play f5 as black. Okay. 
going back to the game knight d7 was played and you will see the difference bishop a3 and now if you do the same b6 bishop b4 rook a8 now a5 makes a lot of sense so this just moves faster now c5 does not work because after take take the d6 pawn is hanging there is no defense there okay got it so here padmini went knight c5 now it could have been a good idea to already start playing on the king side with f5 but i think black players generally are a little bit worried about the knight jump to g5 black players you know because knight e6 is coming in it can get a bit nasty but knight c5 was played first and now narayanan went knight d2 in the position this is again a typical idea because you want to maybe push the rook away then then take on c5 play knight b3 push the pawns forward you know create play so here padmini once again does uh, rook a6 a logical move and here narayanan takes pawn takes and plays his knight to b3 now the c5 pawn is hanging uh, if you were to play queen d6 here which seems possible but then knight b5 is very strong so that's the reason why after knight b3 b6 was played and now you know what should white do white's plan is clear a5 white is creating play on the queen side very quickly and this is actually a nightmare for black i would say because on one hand he has this sort of structurally not so great position his bishop on g7 not so great uh and also the white's play, play on the queen side is very quick yet i would say king's indian players like playing this system let's say like this is such a position because let's say you go bd7 ab6 rook a1 uh, maybe queen a1 cd6 and they they do play such positions so it is it is playable because you have the bishop pair but i would say the initiative is with white here padmini made a mistake she went f5 and now what did narayanan do try to think so first narayanan plays the move a b6 very nice move because if you take back with the pawn here uh, in the position then what's the winning move here can you figure out for white yes it's very important to push the pawn because if you were to first take rook a6 <clears throat> then after bishop a6 d6 there is an additional square on c8 created but if you don't take and you push d6 now this knight is trapped because knight c6 is met with queen d5 check and you lose the knight otherwise if you play knight, rook a1 i will play the intermediate knight i mean i'll take with the knight and then anyway queen d5 is coming when the knight moves to c6 so you're losing a piece an entire piece there so rook b6 was played in the game uh, very unfortunate for padmini because the other moves are losing her a piece and then narayanan simply took on c5 and it's game over you've lost a pawn you've lost everything you haven't even got your king side play rolling this is how the game ended rook b8 rook a7 fe4 knight e4 knight f5 bishop g4 knight d4 takes i mean narayanan uh, is very very solid in such positions exchanges the knights queen h4 takes pawn takes f3 now the knight is very solidly placed rook takes c7 padmini tries for some counter play but it doesn't really work out d6 queen a8 queen a1 offering a queen trade rook comes in and here she resigns uh, the game is over and um, narayanan scores an important win so the the main point which i wanted to show in this game is with the bayonet attack you have to be careful if you're playing as black you cannot really uh, play a5 without a plan because you are playing on the side that is to white's advantage that is the queen side and if you are if you just want to play like king's indian the approach which is to attack then just play knight h5 f5 and so on you know the aggressive system because when you play a5 you are really 
taking on a risk here and as happened in the game padmini did not get a chance to even launch an attack narayanan simply got a very uh, big advantage so this was about their game uh, a very interesting one and i want to talk a bit about this tournament that is the fagerness open that is taking place in norway right now uh, and you will see right now narayanan is in the lead after two rounds two rounds have been completed this is the third round the pairings have been made shashi kiran is number 2 uh, there is mads anderson abhimanyu puranik from india vaishali is on two out of two we have pragna nanda who is on one and half so here are a few pictures from the event uh, this is shashi kiran playing he had a very tough position in round 2 he managed to win it uh, this is sethu raman who is playing there we also have pragna nanda who drew his first game against uh, <clears throat> the youngster uh, and uh, he is actually uh, started off with a draw and now he's on one and half point a uh, tikon is was the opponent of pragna nanda in round 1 against whom he drew uh vaishali on two out of two there and this is abhimanyu puranik who won his game against i am justin sarkar in round 2 so we'll be bringing you more coverage from the fagerness open for now this is sagasha signing off bye bye